Hello there internet, my name is White Dragons and if you're having a little problem with Tinker's Construct like I did in the beginning of my uh, playing with Tinker's Construct hopefully this video will help you. I do apologize for all the Minecraft villagers around me but I can't disable them. And oh my god, there's so many. So let's get started. So to start off with, with Tinker's Constructs, you're going to spawn into the world and everything is going to be just like it normally is. Disregard everything that you see on my screen because this is part of my, Tinker's Construct is part of my mod pack, my private mod pack, uh, that I'm playing through with my Let's Play. So uh, let's start off with the crafting bench. Now the crafting bench is going to be a little weird because again, as I stated, let me get rid of all this garbage, I apologize guys. Let me get rid of all this. This is for setup purposes, and you know, nobody wants to see this crap. Get this out of, get this out of my inventory. Oh, okay, so you're gonna spawn in the world just like you normally would. You're gonna punch a tree. You're gonna get wood. Blah 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 blah. The only big difference is going to be, and I don't think I can do it because I am in uh, creative mode. So hold on, let me get out of creative mode. Mode zero. You're going to spawn in, and lo and behold, you're going to punch a tree, like I said. You're going to get wood, and you're going to create your first crafting bench. Now, it's very difficult to set up these mod uh, uh, reviews uh, or tutorials because you don't want to do anything that would possibly screw you over, just showing you. So, as you can see, uh, we've made our first crafting bench. Now, the difference between this crafting bench and the crafting bench from Tinker's Construct very simply is two things. One, as you can see, it's not in my hand anymore, but it's not on the ground. And two, it actually attaches itself to a chest. It's only one chest, so don't be thinking you can put three or four chests and it's going to attach itself to it. It's only one chest, which I really like. I wish Minecraft would do that. That would be super, super cool. But anyways, back to what we were talking about. So this will be your first crafting bench. Hallelujah! can't do anything without it, but I need you, you're going to need to make a second crafting bench, okay? And why do you need to want to make a second crafting bench? Because this is how you're going to create the crafting station, which is basically the Tinker's Construct crafting bench. So, now that you know, see, it didn't stay in the inventory. Bastard. Alright. So, now that you know how to create that, yay! Let's go over to the crafting station, which is what we'll be using from now on. The old vanilla crafting bench was nice, but this is better. So, uh, to start off with, you're going to need to create the first tier sets of the Tinker's Construct stuff. And I'm not going to give you the recipes and all that other stuff, because if you are playing with NEI, or, yeah, not enough items, there we go, NEI, you're going to be able to see the recipes pretty easy. Uh, actually, I'm just going to turn that off for now. Uh, but I've pretty much done it long enough now that I've know just about everything I need to know to show you. So first thing you're going to need is sticks. Sticks and then you're going to split them up and put them in these corners. You can put it in any corner. Just make sure that they're diagonal from each other. Okay? Alright, see? Okay. Now you're going to take planks. Doesn't matter what type of planks. Preferably the vanilla versions so there's no contrast in mods. And then you're going to put them horizontal from each other. Is it horizontal? or ver Yeah, horizontal from each other. Or is it vertical? I can't remember. You want to make an X, basically. See? X. And you're going to get blank patterns. This is going to be the first type that you're going to need to, in order to create your weapons and tools, for that matter. Also, when you spawn into the world, you'll also have the materials in you, Volume 1, which uh, does a good job explaining a lot of stuff. You also get an achievement for opening it up. And it pretty much is teaching you everything here that I'm going to be teaching you. I'm going to be showing you. So, uh, you know, so if you got the book, get the book out. If you don't, Want the book? Then by all means, just watch the video. So, to start off with, we're going to use our blank patterns to create our uh, stations. So, for example, one plank on underneath the blank patterns, not on top, not on the sides, but underneath, will give us a stencil table. And yes, we do get two more books because we created the stencil table. One is called Tinker's Weaponry, which will help you create weapons, and the other one's called Materials in Volume, the Materials in You, Volume Two which shows you the next tier of that you're going to be building uh, after you've completed tier one of Tinker's Construct. Now we'll say tier one and tier two. Tier one basically is using uh, wood, flint, uh, stone, wood, flint, stone, bone, 
paper. This is all considered tier one material. Okay, you're not you're not using iron or any other type of metal that is um, compatible with Tinker's construct. So the next item that we're going to be using is going to be called uh, the parts builder, which is just one log underneath the blank pattern. And last but not least, the most in, uh, really weird one that I don't quite understand is you need a second crafting bench with a blank pattern on top and it will give you the tool station. Now remember, this is called the crafting station. This is called the tool station, okay? So don't get them confused. All right, there is one more item that I do like building, and if you have the resources, build it. You'll need a chest and a blank pattern, and you'll get a pattern chest. Now the pattern chest is something that's pretty cool to use because it can actually hold all the patterns that you'll be making. And it doesn't matter what setup you put this in, but for me, I like putting my tool station here as last, my parts builder, and then my uh, stencil. So that way my, I have my crafting station, my stencils, my parts builder, my tool station. All of these lined up. You can actually put the chest underneath the tool station if you wanted to, or I'm sorry, the crafting station if you wanted to, but I like having it in the middle. Um, also note that all of these items can be turned into half slabs of their original form. So like this is a half slab pattern chest. So if you're tight on space, you can just kind of like bring it down. Uh, you can't re redo, you know, you can't put it back to its full block, so just fair warning about that. Uh, this is also just like a half slab. It can go on top of anything with an air block on top. This particular item, the parts chest, is used for the parts builder. Well, at least until you get to the forge, which is way down there. So, the parts chest is basically our pattern chest. I don't want to say parts, that's another mod. The pattern chest is basically where you're going to be storing most of your uh, your tier one patterns. Now, as we go to the tool station, uh, sorry, the stencil table, you'll notice that all of these things can be made, but you can't make them. See? You can't make them, no matter what you do. Click as much as you want. The older version, you actually had to click a button, and you would get the individual patterns shown to you. This is where the blank patterns come in that you made a lot of. You just stick them in there. So we're just going to work with just uh, the uh, pick and the sword that you can make. Okay? Everything else you can do on your own. It's pretty easy once you once you learn how to do it. Um, I would suggest going and looking up how to do your, your bow and arrow and your uh, crossbow. If you need me to show you, I'll be glad to show you. But uh, that's a little bit, not complicated, but it's a little bit difficult to explain. All right, so, um, wow, what are we supposed to do with all these patterns? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, I'm so confused. Well, this is where the tool station comes in. The tool station is basically where you're going to be building your, your actual tool or weapon with the parts that you make. So, for example, we want the pickaxe, and it basically gives us a description. The pickaxe, pickaxe is a preci precision mining tool. It is effective on stone and ores. Required parts as a pickaxe head, tool binding, and a handle. Well, there you go. There's your. There's how you know what you need. And it has a nice little picture. So, what do we need? We need the tool binding. Or no, we need the tool rod. So, this would be that one. We need the tool binding, which is this one. And we need the pickaxe head, which, of course, is the pickaxe head. Now, also note, uh, we are, I know what we need for our sword that we're going to be making and I believe it's the uh, wide guard and uh, is it this blade? Yeah, the sword blade. There are actually three types of blade. Knife, blade, and cleaver or large blade pattern. So, alright. Now, who wants to keep this in their inventory, right? So we just, we'll just stick it in there. You can't put books, you can't put sticks, you can only put patterns. That's it. If you right click on the parts builder Ta-da! Look at here, look at there. We now have all our patterns here, and we have a parts builder uh, GUI open up. So we're just going to basically grab these items and put them in here. So don't put them in here because it's not going to work. You want the pattern here and the material here. Now back in the old day, you could use ingots, um, like iron and gold and whatnot to put, to put here. Uh, but now the only ingot that you can use, I think, is pig iron. 
and then blocks uh blocks is kind of uh like a, a like stone stone and whatnot so uh, again all of these nothing pops out of them which is pretty cool oh my god they doubled all right we're not there yet where did i put that material there we go all right so i'm gonna make i'm gonna make bone and flint and paper all right, so like I said before, these are going to be the items that you can use in the tier one. Now there are other items, but this is the items you can get your hands on in the vanilla version. So I'm actually going to make all of my parts, my my the parts that I need um, to do damage or to to break a block. I'm going to make them out of bone. All right, but if you look over to the right, you'll notice it says base durability is 200, handle modifier. Mining speed, mining level, and attack. This will basically tell you if the material you're using is good enough. So if we took the bone off, for example, and we put flint on, well now the durability is 171. The handle modifier, if we make it a handle, is 0 0.7, and it can only mine iron, and it has an attack, uh, attack of one heart. Okay, so we know the bone isn't good for the sword, but the bone is actually good for mining purposes so we're going to basically put that on mining and we're going to put our flint for our sword now how do we know what the cost of these items are in other words how many how do you know what material or how much material you're going to need well simply put the books do tell you a bunch of things that spawn in when you build all this stuff but if you look at the pattern you can see it says material costs one this is the vanilla version and i think in iguana tweaks and a couple of other versions uh, that uh, modify Tinker's Construct, they actually uh, have a list that you, I think if you feel down shift, you can see the list of things that uh, that can you can use on that particular pattern or that particular item or part. So the cost is one, so we know it's going to cost us one piece of flint. One piece of flint, see? Uh, that's for uh, Ender IO, by the way. Uh, one piece of flint, and cost is one, so it's going to cost us one bone. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make those. All right, now, the next thing that we're gonna need is our tool binding, and for our weapon, we need the wide guard. All right, we're gonna have to back up a little bit because I need to teach you how to, oops, I need to teach you how to make the a, the, um, the correct paper for your Tinker's Construct. You can't just use regular paper. You actually need this pattern in to create paper stack. Now, why is paper stack so important? Because it is an actual modifier that adds another slot to your weapon. You don't enchant Tinker's Construct stuff. You actually put modifiers on it. So like here, it says base durability is 30, handle modifier is 3.0, mining speed is 2. You can only use it on stone, and hearts are 0. But it gives you a mod a, an extra modifier to put on. So that's pretty cool, because I think you can put up to four or five, I can't remember. But as you see, because this wide guard pattern only cost me 0 0.5, I'm going to get back half that paper. So that's how, you know, you're going to get back some of your paper. Because if you put paper in here, oh, it does work. Look at there. I must, wow, he changed it. Okay, cool. So this is how, this is the modifier paper, and this is just, okay, cool. So we'll just put that in there, and I'll be able to get rid of that. All right. Again, I have been playing with so many different types of Tinker's Construct modified. It's very difficult to remember what's what. So we have the paper binding. We have the wide guard. We put that over there and that over there. All right. So we got those out of the way. Now, because I've played with Tinker's Construct for a while, I know that both these two right here require the handle or the tool rod. So it's going to be which wrong one? This one. It's going to be this one right here, which is going to be called a handle. And if we go back and we look at the bone, the handle modifier is 0 0.1. And if we look at the flint, it's only it's going to give us a 0 0.7. So 0 0.7, 0 0.1. This is the handle modifier. Uh, this is actually better, so we're going to make two of these. Again, their cost is only 0 0.5. So there you go, easy as cake. And again, nothing falls out, so you can actually just 
put most of your material in here and just kind of like walk away. Uh, so that's, that's, that's actually very nice. Uh, and again, it attached to the pattern chest so you don't have to go anywhere with it. All right, so now we're down to the meat and bones. All right, so uh, we're gonna make a pickaxe first and we already know what we need, which was the pickaxe head, the tool binding, and the handle. So you can shift and you can see it just puts the patterns, to, you know, just puts the parts in there randomly. But if you just like matching up pictures, if you just match it up, voila, we have a bone pickaxe which has a writable uh, attached to it, which is a modifier. So that's how they must do it to keep it modified. Uh, and you can actually go up here and you can name it. So we're gonna name this uh, bone of my bones. All right. And as you can see, the name changed, Bone of My Bones. You can change the name later on if you want to in Anvils, the vanilla Minecraft Anvils. So that's pretty That's pretty cool. But take a look at the durability. Because we put everything together, our durability is now 200. Our mining speed is 4, which is like your haste, how long it takes to, to pick something. And then your mining level is iron. And now we have four modifiers on it. Originally, you would only have three, but we changed one of the parts with paper, which is a modifier, and we got ourselves an extra modifier on it. These will play. This will play on later on. So we just pull it off. Booyah! Now we have a bone of my bones pickaxe. Let's go ahead and make our sword while we're at it. Now this is a special note. If you don't want to waste XP in the anvil, when you go to create something else, delete the name before you go put any parts in. If you don't. You're going to make the same. You're going to make the, the You're going to make a different weapon or tool, but it'll have the same name. So I, I would have bone of my bones pickaxe and a bone of my bones sword, and I don't want that. So we'll put the uh, flint sword in. We'll put the handle in, and we'll put the modified uh, paper wide guard. And there we go. We have a flint broad sword, and we'll name this uh, sword of the new. Okay, and then if we if we go over it, it says Sword of the New, and it has plus six damage, which is pretty nice because if I think I can, let me go back into creative mode real quick and let's look at something. Again, don't pay any attention to all of this because it is uh, items that I am going to be uh, I, I use my Let's Play. Uh, as you can see, the Iron Sword is actually plus six. So we already have a weapon that is literally as good as an iron sword. And the durability is 250. And I can't remember what the durability on this one is, but we can check that out real quick by just putting this in here. Yeah, a durability of 205. So it's actually better, and its attack damage <clears throat> is actually 3. We're going to be able to increase that damage and increase the durability if we wanted to by adding modifiers to it. So that is pretty damn cool. So, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Uh, again, I know it seems like, you know, why are you, why are you breaking these things up? Because I don't want these episodes being long. Uh, so, thanks so much for watching. This, remember, is going to be the basics of Tinker's Construct. So, if you have any other mods that uh, modify Tinker's Construct, the vanilla version, something may not be as like what we're doing here. So go back, make sure that your mods don't modify Tinker's Construct and just look for Tinker's Construct and the Minecraft forums. And uh, yeah, so that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be ready and good to go. Oh my God, this is bad. They're getting, oh. Okay, I gotta go, bye.